Hi there. I often get asked, hey Pete, what do you do with all the twisted sisal rope? Well, now I can finally tell you. So I've been on a mission to find the most sustainable use for all the twisted sisal rope that the Knife Lab produces. And I think the most practical solution is... It's sisal pants! Sisal pants will keep you warm in your trousers and busy in the bedroom. So you can wear the pants that Pete wears in the Knife Lab every day. Sisal pants may cause irritation, severe chafing, atomic wedgie, reverse penis, broken penis, detached penis, and cancer of the penis. Hey, hey, welcome to the Knife Lab. I'm your host, Ellen DeGeneres. Today we are looking at CTS BD1N. Being asked about this a whole lot. The reason it's taking so long is because I was waiting for the knife to get here. We're in Australia, it takes a couple of weeks longer to get everything. Even when you order it from Blade HQ, it's a pre-order. Um, still got shipping and all that sort of stuff, so. But hopefully I can clear up any questions people have about the edge retention of the steel. Well, at least as far as the limitations of my test. Anyway, so what we're going to be doing is comparing it between two other Spyderco steels, VG10 and S30V. And I've done the same edge, the 17 degree mirror polished edge on both of these knives. And these are the results. First for VG10. Cool. 260 cuts of rope and one cut of a finger. And secondly for S30V. Still definitely a good working edge, but yes, there are some flat spots or whatever it is that's just worn down so it is no longer reliably slicing paper at 425. So it's not surprising S30V has a little bit more in it than VG10, things that will cause longer edge retention, such as a bit of vanadium, a higher amount of carbon. It's, uh, it's got a bit more going on, so the results sort of make sense. Um, this here is a steel that is a little less, a little less carbon than the VG10, but it's got some nitrogen in it. It's got some other elements. Let's look at a uh, comparative graph on the screen now. And another important thing to notice is it's quite different to BDZ1 and a little bit different to BD1 as well. So it is a different steel just with a similar name, as is often the case with steels. Um, this uh, steel itself is generally, before this knife was largely found in kitchen knives, pretty decent like high-end kitchen knives. Um, because it's sort of a, you know, it's a step up in terms of a really nice stainless steel that also holds an edge for a good long time. Most kitchen knives will be very stainless, but not hold an edge for a huge amount of time, just because um, I guess you want it to stand up to the abuse that the end users will put a kitchen knife through. So anyway, um, it's a steel that's been met with pretty decent regard already from the people who've had Para 3s, so uh, hopefully I can, I don't know, show you how it compares to these two. So with the exact same edge, obviously not on the exact same blade though, so certain minutia will come into play that I can't disqualify, but um, I'm certainly interested to see where it fits um, with these. Is it above or below either of these? Is it in the middle? Curious. First thing I'm going to do is the factory edge. So I'm going to test the factory edge. All I've cut with it is a single thing of cheese last night when we were watching the Game of Thrones episode. Um, probably less said about that, the better, but um, the, um, the the factory edge is still more or less intact. Uh, it's probably not the best, this isn't the best to really even indicate on how yours is going to be. My factory edge is a little bit squirrely. It's got quite a tall bevel, but then it's definitely got a micro bevel on it as well, which is a little bit of an uneven micro bevel. So anyway, it's how it comes. It's still nice and sharp, so it's not an issue with the sharpness from the factory. It's just, yeah, I wouldn't say that your edge is going to be the same as this one from the factory. It does seem like it's a little bit haphazard. It's a fixable problem, but still thought I'd note that. So anyway, we'll um, factory edge test first, and then I'll put the 17 degree mirror polished edge on it. So let's get to it. Okay, so that other bodes really well for the steel or really well for that freaky factory edge. They hit an excellent combination perhaps. Anyway, there's 150 cuts, which is much more than I thought it would do on a factory edge. Factory edges are usually quite, uh, you know, they uh, come nice and they seem nice and sharp out of the box, but they haven't got the geometries behind them to make for a long lasting edge. They're usually an immediately impressive edge that then dulls quite quickly. But 
This does look like they've ground the whole thing just a little bit taller. I'm curious to see if this is already somewhere near 17 or 18 degrees per side because it is quite a tall bevel and then there's a little bit of micro beveling on it. Hey, maybe that's a good combo for a factory edge. Anyway, um, I'm going to take it to my shafter now and put what I know is a 17 degree mirror polished edge on the stuff and see how it goes from there. Remembering, uh, I think VG10 did 260, see if you can beat that at the very least. Alrighty. So that's a nice uh, sharp enough. It's a uh, very, very slick mirror polish. Um, we are um, going to see how much rope this new edge cuts. Keeping in mind it's the same as 17 degrees on the Endura VG10 and 17 degrees on the Amalgam S30V. Um, very interested to see how this one goes. I did remove just a little bit more steel than I usually would. I sharpened it on the coarser stones for a bit longer. Gave it a good deep working over. Um, just the way the edge came from the factory had a little bit of brown schmutz on it as well, which looked a bit like belt residue or something. So just to skirt around the fact that it's possibly burnt, I've gone and just taken a little bit more off. Not graph like it's not particularly graphic, um, but it is probably a little bit further in, which you know, it's fine. It's going to happen eventually. So it's just kind of maybe two or three sharpenings, more sharpening. So I did actually spend about an hour just then getting this just right, which is. Um, which is interesting because it was actually really easy and nice still to sharpen. I just sunk a bit more time into it, I suppose. So yeah, let's uh, put it to the rope test and see how it does. VG10 stopped here at 270. Let's see how this one goes. Not a problem at all. Very smooth still. Three seventy five. Definitely flattened out 375. VG10 260. STDV 425. CTS BD1N 375. Very good result for a non powder steel. One of the better ones, uh, once again. Um, there's been a um, I thought I might just ask, answer a couple of FAQs uh, that I do get. Seeing this might be a more watched video. Um, yes, my edges are lasting longer and it is because I'm getting better at sharpening and there's not a great deal I can do with that apart from revisit steels from time to time. This has always been a bit of a work in progress, but uh, always just take, say, an older result of mine was probably done with maybe the Lansky system or something, even if it was 17 degrees as well. I'm just able to put so much better edges on with my new um, KME system. So that's just something that's going on there as well and there's not much I can do about it. So just so you know, I am aware. Um, but yes, these have all been done very recently. We're using the same system. So I think these are pretty comparable. Apart from obviously the blade shapes being a little bit different. Most Spydecos are about the 20,000th behind the edge, uh, the same thickness behind the edge. So I'm thinking reasonably comparable. You're gonna see um, an improvement on VG10's edge retention, almost jumping at the heels of a sort of base standard, you know, middle tier uh, powdered steel like S30V. From your CTS BD1N on your Spydeco, Para 3, so really happy with that result. <coughs> hey, if you want to see some cool other testing on this stuff, uh, check out um, PM2OG on Instagram. He's been doing some um, like wire cutting testing with it versus uh, XHP, I think. It's been quite interesting to see as well. So 
Definitely a good steel choice, totally happy with it. Um, still not as good, still not gonna last uh, as long, probably quite reasonably as S30V, which is a you know, more complex steel with a more refined version of um, the, uh, the metallurgy process making it, so. Um, but that's fine. Um, this is a pretty, well, this is a pretty decent knife for the price. Uh, it's only about ten dollars more than a Delica these days in American money, and probably about, about thirty or forty dollars more than a Delica in Australian money. But whatever, um, you get a good edge retention on a great little knife, and I'm really enjoying the Para Three overall as well. But I'll do a full review on it sometime in the near future. All right. So yeah, that's the edge result on the uh, CTS BD1N from Spyderco's Para Two, uh, Para Three lightweight. Uh, I don't know what the Rockwell is they're running it at. Um, I've heard that this still goes best at about 62, so I'm not sure if they're going that high or not. That would explain why it's such a good uh, edge retainer as well, but even without it, yeah, I guess it's just down to the recipe and um, the heat treatment. So that's what I've got. That's all I have for you today, guys. I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.